Reflections on As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, 2020 edition. I've already done a discussion on this particular book, but I believe it's important for me to discuss this again, as I find it to be very valuable to revisit a book like As a Man Thinketh on a regular basis, so thus I listen to the audiobook often, because what it helps me do is evolve my perspective. It also helps me see reality from different perspectives. One of our goals in life is to be able to really identify who we are, which is what I call the higher self. And each one of us has access to this higher self. We have our current self, which is our current self-image, and we have our higher self. Our higher self is who we are destined to be. Our higher self has the ideal of the various areas of our life that we want to see brought forth, or the success we want to create, or the results we want to see in the outer world. And the joyous part of this journey is the revelation of ourselves and the evolution of ourselves to be more in alignment with our higher self. The current self-image expresses itself as the current character being that we are and our interaction with circumstance or environment. And we could feel a high degree of congruence or we feel a lack of congruence. In other words, sometimes we might feel that we're not being who we really are. Now this is important because this allows us to reflect and realize that we can be who we are and we have the ability to evolve ourselves to be who we are and as we continuously do this it externalizes itself more so the being as the version of the different environments people experiences circumstances and reflections of who we really are to affirm itself and further recreate again now, I've taken the book and I've broken some quotes down into two sections. Number one is thought on character and circumstances. And we're going to talk about thought on purpose, two important areas of life. The aphorism, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, not only embraces the whole of a man's being, but is so comprehensive as to reach out to every condition and circumstance of his life. A man is literally what he thinks his character being the complete sum of his thoughts. Now, let's look at the statement. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What he's referring to here is the heart and mind relationship. Okay, This is a new perspective that I've taken upon deeper reflection, and that is that the heart and mind work together. The heart knows, the heart has desires, and the mind creates via the imagination. They work in a spirit of harmony in which we call a successful relationship between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Evolution of individualized character is what we're looking for to reflect the heart and mind relationship. In other words, we evolve ourselves to become more like our higher self and this higher self, who we are destined to be, is found through inner voice conversations and deep reflections upon the visions that we receive in our inner world, the clues, the hunches, to be who we really want to be. This is also called following the heart's desire. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now a man could be thinketh from what we call the ego self, and thus will externalize as experience. And our goal is to evolve, to be as a man thinketh in his heart, which is in alignment with what we truly desire to create. In this direction, as in no other, is the law absolute that he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. For only by patience, practice, and ceaseless importunity can a man enter the door of the temple of knowledge. When we ask, and we're always asking, the answers always appear. And what we're looking to do is shift our perspective around or our consciousness around within 
to understand what is being revealed. The people, the environment, the circumstance, all information reveals to us the answer we are looking for. And what we do is we shift our perspective around within by having a application of the knowledge. In other words, acquiring wisdom. It is said wisdom is knowing the difference. And wisdom really is knowledge plus experience. So we take the knowledge and we apply it, we try it out. And upon reflection of what happens of what we try, we begin to understand even more. And we continue this until we understand that what it is that we are working with reveals to us the answer that we are looking for. In other words, the answer is always in front of us. All of creation is complete. Everything exists right here in the now. And we reveal itself through the understanding within based on perspective shift. Now, this is done based on cause and effect reflection. Effect in the outer world and cause within. Understanding yourself and knowing yourself. When we have an experience with another person, which we call disharmony, we look within ourselves and we say, what belief and assumption are we externalizing in this experience to create it? And what we do is we then evolve that belief and assumption within and we observe that our experience changes with the person. In other words, the answer is revealed. The person brought to you the answer it was just given to you in a way that you might have called undesirable. But upon evolving your perspective within, you then begin to understand them. It is said, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Well, the goal is to understand what shows up by keeping a heart and mind connection in sync. If it's too much mind and there's no heart, you won't be guided from within via the inner voice and the visions from within and the signs and synchronicities that appear because the connection has been broken. And what we need to do then is take a step back and reflect and meditate and let go of disempowering assumptions and beliefs we have to the other person or the information, environment, or circumstance and bring ourselves into what we call unconditional love, acceptance. It is from this level of unconditional love and acceptance that is felt within that we begin to understand. We understand that unconditional love implies giving and receiving is one. Therefore, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. For every cause there is an effect, and the effect is always in alignment with the cause. Now, what is referred to as the temple of knowledge is also found in the inner world via the inner voice. So our goal then is to always remember that we had a very distinct connection with our inner voice, usually in earlier stages of our life. And perhaps we've had certain experiences that disconnected the heart-mind connection, breaking the inner voice connection, the inner voice dialogue between heart and mind of harmony. Our goal then is to rekindle that connection. And we do this through affirmation, meditation, and time to ourselves to reflect. After doing this for a period of time, we connect back to this inner voice that leads us to what, again, I had mentioned called the higher self, reveals to us what we truly desire. The truth is we've always had clues, we've always had hunches and inspirations within that guided us to what we truly desire to experience and create in reality. The question then becomes is, did we honor it? If we did not honor it, what we find is we further break the heart and mind connection. We're more likely then to form what we call the ego mind. And once the ego mind has been formed, we have to again cause and effect reflect to release the ego mind based beliefs and assumptions to bring us back into alignment with the heart and mind connection, thus further facilitating the inner voice. Now always remember this. Certain people, information like this, and this is why I really like listening to the audiobook plenty of times and over and over again. 
Certain kinds of information or environments or conversations facilitate the inner voice, bring you back into this connection. Reflect back on your journey, on the different experiences, the information, the environments, the conversations you had with others that facilitated your inner voice connection. And know that you can bring yourself back to that inner voice connection no matter where you are. Let's talk about circumstances. Man's mind may be likened to a garden, which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild. But whether cultivated or neglected, it must and will bring forth. If no useful seeds are put into it, then abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to produce its kind. What we do is we choose the environments that contain the ideal impressions that we want to make on our subconscious mind. That is the responsibility of the conscious mind. The conscious mind impresses the subconscious mind to further facilitate the heart and mind relationship, revealing the higher self and the inner voice conversations. So we understand ourselves and bring us to a place of as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. All information that is consumed can be filtered and affirmed with harmonizing thoughts. In other words, if you find yourself in information or circumstance as undesirable, what we call undesirable, we can transmute the meaning to see it as contributing and affirmative. How so? Well, perhaps you end up in a situation where you experience certain kinds of information that disempowers you. You are then aware that this information can go into your subconscious mind and further bring forth related information. In other words, externalize itself again. You then say, I choose not to interpret this information from a way that disempowers myself, others, and reality. I choose to transmute the meaning into one that is harmony and alignment with myself, others, and evolution. For example, you can say, Perhaps this information is an opinion, and I seek to understand how this person created this opinion. And I understand their perspective on this opinion. And here's my perspective on the opinion. Now I have choices. I can choose to affirm their opinion, or I could choose to affirm my opinion. And the opinion that is ideal for the affirmation is one that is encouraged by your inner voice. And that's why it's important to rekindle yourself back to the heart and mind relationship to connect back with your inner voice of discernment. Discernment. The outer world of circumstance shapes itself to the inner world of thought. And both pleasant and unpleasant external conditions are factors which make for the ultimate good of the individual. As the reaper of his own harvest, man learns both by suffering and bliss. We value and understand pleasant and unpleasant conditions and factor them to evolve within. Very important. What we consider as unpleasant is again revealing to us about ourselves. Perhaps what we have asked for is being revealed in a way that appears to be unpleasant. But upon reflection, we can release the emotional reaction to what we call unpleasant circumstance and begin to understand it from a place of evolving our perspective within and further affirming that perspective. Again, this is done a lot easier when you have a heart and mind relationship cultivated and inner voice connection. Choosing to maintain this inner voice conversation, the heart and mind relationship, is done by what I call being present and understanding when you're being overly conscious. In other words, the ego is presenting itself. And the ego really means in this context of what we're talking about here, not the part of you that is making conscious choice, but the part of you that gets stuck in your head or creates stagnation or presents anger and frustration towards yourself and others. Understand that those aspects are beliefs and assumptions that may be from past programming. And you can let go of it 
through cause and effect reflection, through inner voice conversation. And your inner voice of unconditional love from the heart will guide you. In other words, being your own best friend. From this perspective, we can understand what we call unpleasant and we can understand what we call pleasant. Unpleasant and pleasant is seen as contributing. How so is going to be determined based on your individual conversation with your inner voice. For me, I was able to find this with my particular unpleasant circumstances and understand accordingly to evolve them, to understand them, to be less reactive to them and more on the side of proactivity to them. Thought on purpose. So we're talking about character and the outer world revealing character and our alignment with what we call the higher self, which is facilitated by our inner voice conversation, which is facilitated by a heart and mind relationship, which encompasses itself as the statement, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, as we continue to build upon this and evolve ourselves from this perspective, we begin to ask ourselves more so, what is our purpose? What are we here to do and create? Well, as mentioned, this is revealed via our inner voice and our higher self connection, as well as this also expresses itself as how we want to live or what we desire to create. What it also expresses itself is service to others. And service to others is primarily through the being. In other words, being who you are is one of the greatest services that you can give to others to further inspire them to create their own heart and mind connection and inner voice dialogue that brings them to their higher self and live accordingly. He says, until thought is linked with purpose, there is no intelligent accomplishment. With the majority, the bark of thought is allowed to drift upon the ocean of life. Aimlessness is a vice, and such drifting must not continue for him who would steer clear of catastrophe and destruction. The idea behind this is that once you facilitate and honor the inner voice conversation, which is the heart and mind relationship, you will begin to find yourself being autotelic and choosing what is in harmony with your purpose, discovering your purpose and living your purpose. Now, from this perspective, we find ourselves more in flow. So you could say having aim or purpose gives us flow, creates flow in our life because then we know where we're going. Now, with this focus and being who we are, we experience something called unwavering focus. In other words, the weed seeds that he refers to are automatically excluded out of consciousness. They do not show up in consciousness. Now, this is a journey of evolution. That's why I recommend reading this book and listening to the audio version as much as possible and going back to it regularly because as your perspectives shift or evolve to be more in alignment with who you really are, you'll begin to understand it even more so in a way that's in alignment with your true being. And perhaps some of the things that I share aligns and connects you and what you'll discover is your own interpretations that will bring you even more in alignment. With AIM, conscious action in service to others is brought forth, also as example. In other words, we know how to consciously act purposefully to be in service for others in an optimal way, more so because that's facilitated by the inner voice conversation via the heart and mind connection. So indecisiveness goes away. Should you do this or should you do that? And being stuck on it is released out of consciousness. Actions and awareness become one. And you are more so in alignment with others and thus co-creating in the spirit of harmony. And also, as mentioned, through the being, this is externalized. So it's not necessarily you're doing this to change others. You're being this way because it's really who you are. And you are being more so each day, which is also inspiring others and also contributing through the actions and awareness becoming one. 
Now, this increases through practice. As mentioned earlier, only by patience, practice, and ceaseless importunity can a man enter the door of the temple of knowledge. Practice is based on cause and effect reflection, and the temple of knowledge is found in the inner world via the inner voice. Those who are not prepared for the apprehension of a great purpose should fix the thoughts upon the faultless performance of their duty, no matter how insignificant their task may appear. Only in this way can the thoughts be gathered and focused and resolution and energy be developed, which being done, there is nothing which may not be accomplished. So, if you don't feel that you have found your grand purpose, Always remember that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Pick whatever it is that you know you have to do and practice focusing your energy and your resolution to seeing it all the way till completion, knowing that this is going to further connect you with who you are. This is another form of the statement, He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. It's a step in the right direction. Let's talk about thought factor in achievement. So, as we mentioned, we want to evolve ourselves to a place of harmony between the heart and mind so that we can facilitate our inner voice conversation, live more and more so each day in harmony with the inner voice and cross-reference in the outer world, discovering our higher self and living our higher self, creating reality the way that we truly desire to create. And through this journey, we create purpose or we experience purpose. We find our purpose and we maintain the purpose and it becomes automatic, more so each day, which we call unwavering focus. And from that perspective, the weed seeds are excluded out of consciousness automatically. And even if you're not at that level of what you would consider a grand purpose, you can apply this by making a step in the right direction in whatever shows up for you to calibrate your mind, as he said, Only in this way can the thoughts be gathered and focused and resolution and energy be developed, which being done, there is nothing which may not be accomplished. All that a man achieves and all that he fails to achieve is the direct result of his own thoughts. Now, this is a realization that we have as we continue on this journey through power in the inner world, shifting perspective in consciousness. So as stated, all that a man achieves and all that he fails to achieve is the direct result of his own thoughts in a justly ordered universe where loss of equipoise would mean total destruction. Individual responsibility must be absolute. So we take responsibility and we do it in our mind via our thoughts, our beliefs, and our perspectives, which is facilitated once again by our inner voice conversation, which is in harmony with the mind that values and encourages the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. In other words, not forceful, but rather operating from a place of real power. A good book to read to help facilitate this is Power Versus Force by David Hawkins and Letting Go by David Hawkins, both of which I did discussions on. I'll put the links in the description. A man may also rise to high success in the world and even to lofty altitudes in the spiritual realm and again descend into weakness and wretchedness by allowing arrogant, selfish, and corrupt thoughts to take possession of him. So this is an ongoing journey. This is a way of being. It is a living and a style that we actually want to do, which is to release aspects about ourselves or the disempowering programming, we can call it, that is bringing us into a externalization of what we do not desire. But if it is, we can seek to understand what is being brought forth and evolve the meaning and the programming within to be more in alignment with our higher self. Now this entire understanding, not only conceptually, but through the being, brings us into a state of what we call serenity. He says, calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. It is the result of long and patient effort in self-control. Its patience is an indication of ripened experience and of a more than ordinary knowledge of the laws and operations of thought. The calm man 
having learned to govern himself, knows how to adapt himself to others, and they in turn reverence his spiritual strength and feel that they can learn from him and rely upon him. The more tranquil a man becomes, the greater is his success, his influence, his power for good. Even the ordinary trader will find his business prosperity increase as he develops a greater self-control and equanimity, for people will always prefer to deal with a man whose demeanor is strongly equable. The journey is to reveal ourselves, affirm ourselves, create the harmony between the heart and mind, facilitate via the inner voice the connection with what I also call infinite intelligence that reveals the answers, otherwise as he refers to here, as the temple of knowledge. Through this process, one becomes more so calmer than they have ever been before because they know they will find the answers within. This is what creates the calmness. And as a result of being this way and living this way, we inspire others to also find this way, and this is why it's stated here, that others feel that they can learn from him and rely upon him. What are they really learning? They're learning to find their own version of that. He says, Tempest tossed souls wherever ye may be, under whatever conditions ye may live. Know this, in the ocean of life, the isles of blessedness are smiling and the sunny shore of your ideal awaits your coming. Keep your hand firmly upon the helm of thought. In the bark of your soul reclines the commanding master. He does but sleep. Wake him. Self-control is strength. Right thought is mastery. Calmness is power. Say unto your heart, Peace, be still. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.